H. I lay out 16 pieces of poster board, four down, four across. A perfect square. What are you up to? Bob demands. I'm guessing it doesn't involve sleep. It has to do with the billboard. That sign's a monstrosity, particularly since I'm not featured. I grab my bucket of a red paint. You're not on the billboard because you're not in the show, I point out. Technically, I don't even live here, Bob says with a sniff. I am, oh, I am homeless by choice. I know, I'm just saying. I study the billboard, then I make two fat lines like broom handles. Another fat line to connect them. I stand back. What do you think? Well, what is it? No, wait. Let me guess. A ladder. Not a ladder, I say. A letter. At least I think that's what they're called. I have to make three more. Bob cuddles up next to not tag. Why? He asks, yawning. Because, I say, then, uh, then I'll have a word, a very important word. I dip my fingers into the paint. What word? Bob asks. Home. Bob closes his eyes. That's not so important, he says quietly. Nervous. All day long, I knuckle, walk, circles around my cage. I'm so nervous I can't nap. I can't even eat. Well, not very much, anyway. I'm ready to show Julia what I've made. It has to be Julia. She's an artist. Surely she'll look, truly look, at my painting. She won't notice the smudges and tears. She won't care if the pieces don't quite fit together. She'll see past all of that. Surely Julia will see what I'm, I've imagined. I watch Ruby trudge sullenly through the four o'clock show and I wonder what will happen if I fail? What if I can't make Julia understand? But of course, I know the answer, nothing. Nothing will happen. Ruby will remain the main attraction at the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, conveniently located off I-95, with shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year, year after year after year, showing Julia. It's time to show my work. The mall is silent except for Thelma, the macaw, who is practicing a new phrase. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Julia is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab, not tag, and carefully pull out the folded papers. So many paintings page after page, piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on my glass and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture and then another and another and another, each one a tiny part of the whole. Julia looks confused. But what, what is it? She asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's pretty, just as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think, no, it does matter. More paintings. George calls out to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack, he says, and hurry, it's late. 
Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. I find one, another one, another. I try to hold four of them up against the glass. Bob, I say, help me, hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them to me. One by one, I show pic shove pictures through the window crack. They crumple and tear. There are too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings into a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell these in the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out the hole and more and more all then, all of them, one after another. So Ivan's been painting, has he? George says as he puts on his coat. A lot, says Julia with a laugh. A whole lot. You're not taking all those home with you, are you? George asks. I mean, no offense to Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stack of paintings. They might not be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those by the office, George suggests. Mac will want to try selling them. Although why anyone would pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do, I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All my work, all my planning, wasted. I look at Ruby sleeping soundly and suddenly I know she'll, she'll never leave the big top mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. Chest beating. Often when visitors come to see me, they beat their hands against their puny chest, pretending to be me. They pound away soundless as the wet wings of a new butterfly. The chest beating of a mad gorilla is not something you ever want to hear, not even if you're wearing earplugs, not even if you're three miles away wearing the earplugs. A real chest beating sends the whole jungle running as if the sky is broken open, as if men with guns are near. Angry. Thump. The sound, my sound, echoes through the mall. George and Julia spin around. Julia drops her backpack. George drops his keys. The pile of pictures go a-flying. Thump, thump, thump. I bounce off the walls. I screech and bellow. I beat and beat and beat my chest. Bob hides under knot tag, his paws over his ears. I'm angry. At last, I have someone to protect. Puzzle pieces. After a long while, I grow quiet. I sit. It's hard work being angry. Julia looks at me with wide, disbelieving eyes. I'm painting. I'm a little out of shape. What the heck was that, George demands. Something's really wrong, Julia says. I've never seen Ivan act this way. He seems to be calming down, thank goodness, George says. Well, Julia, she just shakes her head. He's still upset, Dad. Look at his eyes. My pictures are scattered all over the floor like huge autumn leaves. What a mess, George says, sighing. Wish I hadn't bothered sweeping tonight. Do you think Ivan's okay, Julia asks. 
Probably just a temper tantrum, George says. He reaches under a chair to retrieve a brown and red picture. Can't say I blame the guy stuck in that tiny cage all these years. Julia starts to answer, but then she freezes. She cocks her head. She stares at his, her feet where my pictures lie in disarray. Dad, she whispers, come see this. I'm sure he's another Rembrandt, George says. Let's pick them up and get going, Jules. I'm exhausted. Dad, she says again, seriously, look at this. George follows her gaze. I see blobs, many, many blobs, along with the occasional swirl. Please, can we just go home now? That's an H, Dad. Julian kneels down, straightening one picture, then another. That's an H, and here, she grabs more pictures. Put this one here, and I don't know, maybe that one. You have an E? George rubs his eyes. I hold my breath. Julia is running now. She picks up one picture, sets down another. It's like a puzzle, Dad. This is something. It's a word, maybe words, and a picture of something, a giant picture. Jules, George says, this is crazy. But he's looking at the floor, too wandering from picture to picture and scratching his head. H, Julia says, E, O, Ho? Julia chews her lower lip, H, E, O, and that looks a lot like an I. H, E, O, I, George writes in the air with his finger. I, E, O, H, not the letter, an actual I, and that's a foot, or maybe a tree, and a trunk. Dad, I think that's a trunk. Julia runs to uh, my window. Ivan, she whispers, what did you make? I stare back. I cross my arms. This is taking much longer than I'd thought it would. Humans. Sometimes they make chimps look smart.